This week, we'll learn how to access real-time mesoanalysis, or RTMA data, and use it to make a surface chart like this. Welcome to another MetPy Monday. Hello and good MetPy Monday morning to you. My name is John Lehman and I'm a software engineer for Unidata. This week we're going to go off a tweet that developer Ryan May had a few weeks ago where he showed a chart with some potential temperature contours and some other things on it. We're going to do a variation on that and we're going to build it over the next several weeks using different data sets, some of which we haven't used before. So this week we're going to start out with RTMA data, or real-time mesoanalysis, which is a best gridded approximation of the surface conditions in the last hour. We're going to put that on a chart with a temperature shaded background or filled contours. And then we're going to calculate theta E, and we're going to contour that on top of the chart. So this makes it very easy to find things like fronts. Then we'll start adding other things like... Uh, we're going to do some METAR data, which we've played with before. We're going to use the airport locations file to plot airport, and then we're going to actually calculate conditions at each of those sites and categorize them as to what the weather's like there. So let's get started. We've got a lot to do to make this map. And that always starts with a lot of imports. Since this is going to be a large mapping project that we build over a couple of weeks, I'm going to keep all my imports at the top, and I know exactly what we're going to need for this particular chart, so we're going to go ahead and put them all in at once. It just keeps the scrolling to a minimum so you don't get seasick. So from date time, we're going to import date time and time delta. Import the Cartopi coordinate reference system as CCRS. Import Cartopi.feature as C features, so we can get things like coastlines or states. Import matplotlib.pyplot as PLT, obviously we're going to do plotting. Import metpy.calc as mpcalc. Import metpy.plots as mpplots. We're going to get real-time data, so we're going to need siphon the catalog object, we're going, or the catalog submodule, we're going to import the TDS catalog object. And we're going to import NumPy. So that's quite a block of imports there, but there's nothing that we haven't seen before. I'm going to go ahead and create the timestamp that I want to use. I'm going to code this in a way that if you're following along weeks or months in the future, it's still going to work. You just obviously won't get the same map. But I want eight days before the current date that I'm recording this. That's just because there happened to be a relatively strong front going across the country at that time. The map for the day that I'm recording this, unfortunately, is quite uninteresting. So we're going to get UTC now minus a time delta of eight days. All right, so now we need to go get our real-time mesoanalysis data. For that, I'm going to go over to the thread server and show you a couple things. This is on threads.ucar.edu in the incept grib RTMA CONUS 2.5 kilometer and I've selected the most recent GRIB file just to show you this uh, data set page. Because if we look down here, there's a lot of information that we may or may not find useful for our purposes. But the thing I want to show you is variable map. This shows you everything that we can get from the RTMA file. RTMA does not have everything, but it does have things like dew point, uh, error in dew point, Geopotential heights, pressure, temperature, cloud cover, visibility, precipitation, uh, wind, wind speed, wind U and V, and wind gust. And like I said, certain elements of this will be useful for our future analysis, and we're also going to use some METAR data. But for now, let's back up just a little bit to the catalog. 
So this is the top level catalog for the Conus 2.5 kilometer RTMA. I'm going to copy that URL. I'm going to create a catalog object, paste that in. Don't forget that we're going to change HTML to XML. Again, if you don't, you'll just get a warning that says Siphon is doing this for you, but we're going to preempt that warning by doing it ahead of time. Now we're going to get RTMA data from the RTMA catalog dot data sets and we want the full collection data set meaning give me everything all the dates all the times that you have because we're going to access it using x-ray and you'll see why in just a little bit so we're going to use remote access and set use x-ray to be true. So we're only going to pull down the data that we need when we need it. Otherwise, we're just going to be pulling down metadata. And then we're going to use the metpy parse cf method to make that x-ray data array parsed and nice to deal with for us. Now, if we remember that variable list or we go back and pull it up, we can get things like pressure, temperature, and dew point, which are what we need to calculate equivalent potential temperature. So let's go ahead and get those variables. Pressure. Now you can use the dot access method like this. Or you can use my preferred method, which is the dictionary-like access, because this would handle spaces or unaccepted characters for the dot access method. Again, either works. This looks a little bit worse when you're just reading through the code, but it is a more robust solution, so I like it, so I only have to read one way. We're going to use the metpy accessor, and we're going to select the time that is DT. Now there may not be an exact time DT because remember I just use UTC now. So that's going to have the minutes and the seconds. So we're just going to say method equals nearest. In other words, just give me the time that you've got that's nearest to where I am. And we're going to squeeze out any extra dimensions that we don't need. Now we're going to repeat that for temperature and for dew point. All right, so now we've got our pressure, temperature, and dew point variables. Notice that ran very quickly. But if I look at something like temperature, we see that we've got these X and Y coordinates. Our MetPy CRS, which is the Lambert Conic conformal projection, time, ref time, and so on. We also have the attributes from the grib file itself, which is particularly useful because it, tell us, it tells us that this is in Kelvin. All right, now we're ready to do our first calculation with X-ray data arrays. We're going to calculate equivalent potential temperature, which is mpcalc dot equivalent potential temperature. If we look at the doc string, it takes pressure, temperature, dew point. And let's go ahead and calculate that. It's going to take just a second. This is a relatively large grid. And while that's calculating, we can go ahead and type our next line which is I'm going to grab the projection from this equivalent potential temperature, the Cartopy CRS attribute in the MetPy accessor because it carried over when we were doing the calculation and that will make actually creating the plot a little bit nicer. So finally it's time to make our figure. 
I'm going to create a figure object, plot.figure, fig size, in this case, we're going to make it 20 by 10. I'm going to create an axis with fig, add, subplot, one row, one column, first axis. The projection is going to be our plot projection. I'm going to set the extent to be a conus bound, so minus 122, minus 75, 25, and 50 ought to be about right. And we need to tell it what that is in, since it's not in the plot projection. It's not in Lambert Conic Conformal. Those are just lat lawns. So the CRS is everybody's favorite, plat curry. I'm going to add a feature, just so we've got some references here. C feature dot coastline. We'll use the 1 to 50 million, million scale and a line width of 3 quarters. We'll also add the states feature with a line width of a half. All right, now it's time for our data. So first I'm going to use contour F for my temperatures for filled contours. We'll get the x from temp.metpy.x, temp.metpy.y for our y coordinate. I'm going to take the temperature and subtract 273.15 to go from Kelvin to Celsius. The transform is temp.metpy.cartopy CRS. Now we could use plot projection here, but I'm using the one from the actual temperature data set, so that if we change that, it would still reproject for us. Though it might be slow, it would still plot the map correctly. And for levels, we'll go from minus 30 to positive 40 in four degree steps. Finally, for the color map, I'm going to use the cool warm. That seems appropriate. Now we need to contour our theta e. So we've got our x and y coordinate for theta e. Then we've got our theta e. The levels for that, we're going to go from 240 to 400 also in steps of four. We'll just leave that in Kelvin. That's not how we normally look at equivalent potential temperature. For the colors, I've always plotted equivalent potential temperature in sort of a yellow shade. Uh, we'll use tab olive for that. And the transform is going to be theta e dot metpy dot Cartopi CRS. Again, I could go up here and change this plot proj to be anything I wanted, and everything would still reproject correctly because I'm coding it this way. We're going to add the MetPy logo. It's one quick line to do, or the Unidata logo. And I'm going to set my plot title to be my date time, string format time, year, month, day, hour, Zulu. And we can always go back and make this fancier if we want, but we're not exactly done with our map yet. We're not sure what it's going to look like. But let's go ahead and run this. It'll take just a second to do all those contours and see what we've produced. Okay, so here we've got our map. We can clearly see there's a front stretching across Eastern Oklahoma. We've got all this cold Arctic air and now a warm air mass down here. But these are pretty squiggly. If you look in here, there's a lot of detail that probably isn't meaningful or maybe even not real. So we're going to go back up here into our theta e calculation. 
And we're going to use another MetPy calc, which is smooth Gaussian. We're going to smooth theta E, and we'll use an N of eight. Now, what does that mean? It's the degree of filtering, which if you don't know much about how Gaussian filters work, we've got a lot of details here in the docs, but it's a pretty standard way to smooth things like this. Now, let's run the plot again. And there we go. Now we've got a lot of these squiggles smoothed out, and we could play with that uh, n equals number to try to get exactly what we wanted, but I'm pretty happy with this. We've especially cleaned it up out here in the western part of the country. I hope that you found this useful and that we're going to continue adding to this map over the next several me weeks to make one of the more complicated maps we've ever made. Thank you for joining me, and I'll see you on next week's MetPy Monday.